Hello and good morning and welcome to the After College webinar on diversity with a particular focus on Generations Y and Z. My name is Stephanie Peterson and I'm the Vice President of Marketing at After College and I'll be presenting to you this morning. I'm so glad you joined us. Um, I just have a few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, first, I wanted to let you know that we're going to be recording the webinar today. So if for some reason you need to jump off early and want to finish listening later, or if you love the webinar so much that you want to listen to it a second time, um, or if you want to share with a colleague, we will be uh, posting our uh, the webinar recording to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash after college media. So this will be up on our YouTube channel and all of our um, previous webinars are up there too, if you're interested. Um, and then we'll also be sending everybody who, who signed up for the webinar an email with a link to the recording so you can um, access it that way. Um, and then also I just wanted to let you know too that um, towards the end of this uh, webinar, I'll be taking questions and answers. Um, so um, feel free to type your questions into the GoToWebinar control panel at any time. You don't need to wait until the end. Um, the webinar this morning is a short 30 minutes in length. I'm going to speak for 20 minutes. I'm going to try to limit myself to 20 minutes. Um, and then that should give us enough time to do some Q&A at the end. And then at the end of the presentation, I will provide uh, my contact information and feel free to reach out to me one-on-one -on -one afterwards if you have any additional questions or just anything else you want to talk about or share. Okay, so this is our agenda for today. Um, I'm just going to give you guys a quick intro to After College and myself, and then I'm going to talk about the scope of this diversity study that we did, uh, just to set the stage. And then I'm going to give you some high-level initial thoughts on Generation Z and diversity. Um, Generation Z, I actually did a webinar on Generation Z um, back in November, and that's up on our YouTube channel if you're interested. Um, it, but it, it, it's interesting to see how things are going to change and how they're going to change the face of diversity in the workplace. So I just want to talk, touch on that high level. Um, and then we'll dig into the results from the survey that we did. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about perception of different sectors or industries. Um, we're going to, I'm going to share some key insights from the survey, and then I'll just do a quick summary, and then we'll go into the Q&A. So a, a quick intro. For, for those of you who aren't familiar with After College, our mission is to help every student and recent graduate land their dream internship or job. So After College was founded back in 1999, so we're almost 17 years old, um, but we were founded by students from Stanford who themselves were frustrated with a lack of resources to help them with their job search. So, um, so there's a lot of heart in, in what we do. Um, one of the things that we've learned working really closely with students over the years is that searching for a job can be really overwhelming for them, especially if they're sort of on the liberal arts side of things. There's a lot of different um, jobs that they could be applying for, industries that they could go into. So what we've done is we've developed a tool called Explore, which um, allows students to put in their school and major. And then based on that, it shows them a series of jobs um, that they can indicate preferences for, like I like this or I don't like this. Um, and then based on all of the data we've collected over our 16 years or so in business and all of the machine learning that we have going on behind the scenes, it helps them sort of zero in on the jobs and companies that they should apply for. Um, and then also in our 17 years of business, we've built a database of over 18,000 faculty and student group contacts. So what we do for employers like you is we help you reach students early in their academic journey um, to sort of build your employer brand and to we can send targeted messages to students through the faculty to help um, invite them to your on-campus events and to apply for your internships and jobs. So a real quick bit about me. Um, I've been at After College for a little bit over a year. Um, before, I, and I've spent my whole career actually studying youth culture and focusing on developing products and services for Generation Y or Millennials and now Generation Z. So before After College, my last job, I worked at Google. I was a head of brand strategy at YouTube. Um, and then before that, I worked um, as a director of marketing at LeapFrog, which is a, a company focused on developing educational toys. Um, and there I was actually focused on the tween, tween market. And then before that, I worked at Microsoft for a number of years um, and was one of the people who helped develop the Xbox gaming business. So, um, 
So I had a really fun career path, but the common thread throughout all of it is really focusing on this demographic. I myself am a Generation X, like I'm square in the middle of that cohort. My children are Generation Z, and I've just sort of endlessly been fascinated by the differences between the generations and their outlook. Um, so um, here's uh, let's move on to the scope of the study that we did on diversity with um, students and recent graduates. So. We do a lot of studies throughout the year at After College. We do one huge study every April, which kind of takes a pulse on uh, students' job search, where they are in their job search, and um, what they find challenging about the job search, et cetera. Um, but we've also done some smaller studies throughout the year on topics that are sort of hot or interesting. Um, and we got a, we get a lot of questions from um, our cust our employer customers about diversity. So this is the first time we've done a diversity study, and we wanted to. Um, you know, put this together for ourselves to help us understand how to how to help students and then for our employers as well. So we did an online survey. There were um, 101 respondents to the online survey and they um, spanned the age range of 18 to 28. 78% um, of the respondents already have a bachelor's, a master's or a PhD. They so they've already earned their degree. Um, and then the rest of the people who took the survey, um, the balance, are working towards a degree right now. So they're currently in school. Um, of the people who responded to the survey, um, the majority of them have uh, an engineering degree or are working towards an engineering degree at 22%. Um, the second most popular area of study or focus was business and management. And then the rest of the respondents were fairly evenly spread across just all the other areas of study. 66% um, of the people who took the study are actively looking for a job right now. And then um, you can see the breakdown of um, the different um, diversity um, classes that they self indicated that they were a member of. So 66% indicated they were part of a minority ethnic group, 45% are female, 7% uh, a minority religious group, 5% of the respondents were disabled, and 4% are veterans or currently in the military. So that should hopefully give you some background on what we did. And then, you know, we not only did this online survey, we actually um, followed up with some of the people who took the online survey and actually had phone interviews with them just because we wanted to dig a little bit deeper on some of the responses we got and understand the why of it. Um, so you'll see some quotes later in my presentation um, from some of those conversations. And then in preparation for this study, I wanted to be sure I was asking questions that employers like you want answered. So I had conversations um, with a number of diversity recruiters um, from some of the bigger companies like Microsoft and Google and Twitter and Square, just to kind of get an understanding of what how they're approaching diversity recruiting with this age group and what they think some of their challenges are and what are some of the things that they've learned. So that was really helpful to get some of their insight. Okay, so let's touch a little bit on Generation Z, or some people call it Generation Z. Um, and then there's a couple of other names that are kind of going around. I think everybody's scrambling to coin a kind of a cool term for the name of this next generation. Um, but let's just call them Generation Z for right now. So Generation Y are people that are roughly ages like 21 to 35. So millennials or Generation Y, they're, they're actually now fully in the workforce. The tail end of that generation are juniors and seniors in college and will be entering the workforce. And now we're seeing a shift into Generation Z or Z. Um, probably at this point, most college freshmen and sophomores identify more with uh, Generation Z and their ideals than they do with Generation Y. So that shift is happening. It's not like a hard line, but you'll, you'll probably start to see sort of, um, you know, some differences in the candidates that you're recruiting over the next few years. Um, so Generation Z is still forming, you know, their age is approximately five to 20. So the youngest Generation Z um, are really, they're, they're still kids. So we're, you know, a lot of studies are going on, but it's hard. They haven't fully formed yet. <laughs> they're forming. Um, so, but the thing that I think is really interesting is if you look at the demographics and how this might help shape diversity. So Gen Y definitely was a very, was the most diverse generation that we've had so far. Um, and they've embraced diversity. Uh, they have a good diverse viewpoint in general. 
Um, but Generation Z is going to be the last generation that will be over 50% Caucasian. And um, so I think they're really going to be the tipping point in, in diversity in all aspects of our life, um, but in particular in the workplace. So um, folks that generate that are predicting birth rates and things like that in the U.S. are predicting that in two in the year 2019, so three years from now, that will be the first year in the United States that less than 50% of the babies that are born are Caucasian or white. So it's just, I think that Generation Z is going to be a really huge catalyst in sort of tipping us all more towards a diverse perspective and a diverse workforce. Okay, so let's move on to um, diversity perception by sector. So one of the higher level questions we asked in the survey is we just wanted to get um, the respondents' general feelings about these high level industries. And as you can see from the results here, healthcare um, by a small margin is is perceived as being um, the most diverse industry, um, and then technology as being the least diverse, which is kind of interesting because um, as we get further into the presentation, you'll see that we asked students to name companies that they thought were embracing diversity, and the top few companies that they named were in the technology sector. But I, there, I have a theory about that, so we can, we'll can we talk about that in a couple minutes. Um, so it's just interesting, you, know, you can look at your sector here um, and see what the general perceptions are. So technology, finance, and banking are kind of seen as the least diverse um, sectors. Okay, so here I have five key insights for you from the survey, and this is the first of them. Um, so seeing is believing. So this is sort of the heart of what we were asking in, in, in the survey, we wanted to understand when searching for a job, whether you're a student looking for an internship or you're a graduate looking for a full-time position, when you're, when you're looking at a prospective employer, what do you think best communicates their level of commitment to diversity? And so um, the, what they really need to do is see diversity, like in person, real, live people. <laughs> so, you know, they need to see a diverse recruiting team and interview panel. And um, they also need to see diversity in the environment, in your, in your office. Um, it's more, it's, you know, more than just the people. Um, <clears throat> so th this quote I pulled from one of our um, interviews, which is, you know, this person said, I've gone into interviews where I've been on the company website and I've seen the staff picture, right? And there's no women in the picture. And then as much as I would love to blaze trails, I'm not looking for a company where it would be a fight. So if I were interviewed by a woman in the engineering department, I'd feel more inclined to work for them. This was uh, the person who gave us this quote is uh, a, an engineering graduate. So, you know, I think it's it's just further um, support for the notion that they have to see it both in the recruiting team and then in the interview panel when they come in. The, the next point I want to make is that it's not only about people. When candidates come into interview, it's actually a lot of it is to do with the environment from like the decor in your office to what they see on the walls. Um, one of the uh, big tech company recruiters, diversity recruiters that I talked to, she said she's done a lot of, you know, uh, interviews with uh, candidates after their interview process, just to get a sense of how they felt about the company um, in her follow-up. And, you know, they are really strongly affected, she said, by the look and feel of their office. Um, this particular tech company's office is very, she described it as like an Ikea showroom. So it's sort of very Scandinavian, modern and stark. And um, it, she said that she's learned from candidates that just by the way that the office is designed, even though it's kind of hip and cool and how you'd picture a tech company looking, it's not very warm and inviting to diversity candidates. And they, they, it, it doesn't look like a place or feel like a place that they would want to work. Um, I've also heard, you know, feedback from talking to diversity recruiters that, you know, just even things that are on the wall. That's why I put the sticky, um, the picture of all these sticky notes on the wall. You know, it says something to a candidate when they're looking around the office and taking all this in. So you can't solve for everybody here and your office certainly needs to reflect your culture and your brand. Um, but it's just something to think about as um, diversity candidates are, are coming in to interview. 
Okay. <clears throat> so this is really uh, important as well. Um, so you need to be transparent and measure progress uh, in terms of your diversity numbers, right? So we asked two questions around this. How, how important is it to you that your current or future employer provides full transparency on their diversity statistics? And you can see that, you know, 80, over 80, percent said, you know, it's very important to somewhat important. They want to know what, what is the current state of diversity in the companies that they're working for or applying to. Um, and then we also asked them how important is it that they have stated diversity goals. And obviously this, this is even more important, um, slightly more important. So, um, and then you can see the quote here again that further supports this that came out of our interviews, which is, you know, stated goals are important because if they're mentioned, it stands out to me. If they're not mentioned, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it makes of a left, less of an impression on me when searching. So I think this is an, a really interesting thing, and you can see in just in the media that a lot of companies are uh, becoming more forthcoming and more transparent with their diversity statistics and having stated diversity goals and, and programs. Um, and I, there's a lot of pressure now to do that because some of the bigger companies have. Um, so this is interesting too. So. Um, one of the we asked a couple open ended questions during the survey, and this is a word cloud. So the size of the font in this word cloud, or the name of the company, the size, the the bigger it is, the more times it was mentioned. Um, so what's really interesting here is that um, Google and Apple pop out as um, two of the most mentioned companies that the respondents to the survey think are embracing diversity, um, even though they're tech companies. So um, I just wanted to look at their numbers real quick and, and show you uh, what's what I think is happening here. So, you know, I think both Google and Apple are a study in transparency. If you go to apple.com backslash diversity or google.com backslash diversity, you can see they actually have these little tools on their site where they show their diversity statistics, right? So I just copied and pasted their overall diversity statistics, right? So you can see that for Google, 70% men work there. Um, but what's interesting is if you, if you click through and look at the um, diversity statistics for the tech jobs within Google and for leadership, it's, it's even way worse. Like, you know, leadership at Google is 78% men and 72% white. Um, and you see the same thing at Apple, right? So um, if you go on their tool, you'll see very, very similar numbers. However, these two pops, like there's a, even though their diversity numbers are by most people's standards, very bad, <laughs> Um, because they have been out in the media stating like, look, we identify this, we know it's a problem, here's our numbers, here's what we're doing to try to become an, a more diverse company, um, the perception is positive, even though the numbers aren't, aren't great. So it's just something for, I think, everybody, all employers to consider is, is being transparent and, and um and really um, honest, I guess, about what your challenges are. Okay, so the next key insight I have for you is more qualitative. So when in the survey, we asked them at the end, just do you have any general comments about diversity? Do you wanna say anything? And um, these are only three of, I think about you know 15 or 20 quotes that or, or, you know, responses that we got that said, basically, I don't want special treatment, right? So I just want to feel like I belong. So you can see this um, in, in all of these quotes. The first one says, I value an employer who gives me an honest, fair opportunity to contribute to and succeed in the workplace. I do not want special treatment as a result of being a member of a minority group. You know, I don't think that people from minority groups should get special treatment. As a gay man, I don't want to be treated differently. I want to be treated the same. That's why diversity is important to create an equal playing field. And then the last one was, I don't want to be seen as a minority. I want whatever respect my work brings, not, oh, we gave him a chance just because he's part of a minority group. I want them to say, oh, we gave him a chance because he's really good at what he does. So I think these are all, you know, really good examples of, um, you know, 
how this co how the this diversity um, cohort feels about themselves in the workplace. No special treatment. Okay, <clears throat> so my last key insight for you is let them help. So we asked them, like, how important is it to you that your current or future employer provides opportunities for you to become involved in diversity initiatives? And, uh, you know, a lot of them said, yes, this is very important to me. So I think um, one of the things we know about Generation Z2 versus Generation Y is um, Generation Y has gotten a pretty bad rap. Like a lot of people think of Generation Y as sort of entitled and expecting like everybody gets a prize. Um, and expecting things to just be easy. Um, Generation Z, though, is, and, and that may or may not be true. I think it's probably um, too too stereotypical of a thing to say and, and, and not true in all cases. But it, Generation Z is, is shaping up to be a generation that is like, they know they, they just want to bootstrap and do it themselves. They are very self-motivated and self-driven. So whatever it is that they want to do they are going to make it happen. And so they have a, a stronger sense of determination about them uh, from the research that we've done with them. So I think this um, is matches perfectly with, with you know, developing diversity initiatives and letting them get involved and help you drive your diversity goals forward. I think they're going to be, you know, really helpful and really effective in that area. Okay, so now we're to the conclusion. I know this was a short webinar, and a lot of the things I talked about are, are kind of really, each, each insight is pretty juicy, and we could talk about it, um, each one of them probably, in and of themselves for an hour. But I just let me just go back over everything I said real quick and summarize for you. So the first thing is that um, Generation Z or Gen Z is, is going to be the tipping point, I think, in our diversity efforts across our entire culture, but definitely in the workplace. Um, it's, it's really important seeing is believing. So, you know, this generation needs to see diversity at a perspective employers, uh, in order for them to feel that they're committed to diversity. Um, diversity is more than just the people you meet. It's about the whole environment and the whole experience that a candidate would have coming into interview. Um, the, the, the next one is you, you really need to be transparent. You need to state your diversity goals, even if they're not good or your diversity statistics, even if they're not good. And then you need to have stated diversity goals to go along with them. Um, this generation, they don't want any special treatment. Um, and they really want to jump in and help. They want to help drive diversity forward. So with that, let me just give you one final little note about what we do here at After College. I explained in the beginning, um, you know, how we can reach out through our faculty network to get to students. And I just want to point out that we reach 98% of the top 100 campus diversity programs and have a lot of relationships and, and, and contacts with, um, you know, the HBCU, HACU schools, Native American and Asian colleges and universities. Um, we also have a pretty deep reach into the Society of Women Engineers and the National Society of Black Engineers and Society of Hispanic Engineers. So, um, and then we also run a number of scholarships every year for diversity students. So if you have any questions about how we can help you um, with reach your diversity goals and, and reach some of these uh, Gen Zs um, that are currently in college, you know, feel free to reach out to us. You can either go to our website, which is aftercollege.com, or you can just contact me directly. Um, on this final slide, you can see if you want to send an email, if you want to reach out to me, I, I will get all of the emails that go to info at aftercollege.com. Just send it there. And I would be happy to discuss further with you the research or if you have any questions or you just want to talk about this. Um, I think for us, this diversity conversation and the study is not a one-time deal. I, I really want to keep it going with students, with faculty and student groups, and also with employers like yourselves. So with that, let me um, let me go into some questions. So feel free to use your GoToWebinar um, control panel and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so the first question is, can you please repeat who was your target group invited to participate in the survey? So we invited people that were between the ages of 18 to 28 years old.
and who were either already had at least a four-year degree or were in pursuit of a four-year degree, meaning they were actively enrolled as a student. Um, do you double count minority females? Yes. So, I mean, we had 101 people respond to the survey. Many of the people who responded do identify as being a part of more than one minority group. And we let them indicate that as such in the in the survey itself. So if if we had a African-American female, um, when we asked them to identify, they would they would have been, you know, they should have checked both, you know, African-American and female. Okay. You indicated that 101 responded. This seems like a small number. How many were invited to participate? Well, we invited um, probably a few thousand people to participate in the survey. Um, it is hard to get students to respond to surveys um, and to make sure that they're diversity students. So, it, you know, we did have uh, a little bit of a challenge with that, but we felt like 100 was a good enough number to give us a sense of, um, of what, I think to give us a valid sample size, to give us a sense of their feelings around diversity. Um, okay, let's see, does anybody have any other questions? We have four minutes left. Um, okay. Here's another one. From your research and viewing, who would you say is the best employer that models diversity currently? Mm, that's a tough question. I, I mean, I, I think the student's perception is that companies like Google and Apple, as I mentioned, are modeling not necessarily diversity, but they're modeling an approach to becoming more diverse. Right. So because they've been so transparent with their goals and so transparent with their diversity programs, um, I think that there's a perception that even though they aren't diverse by most st people's standards at this moment in time, that they're uh, making a great um, effort to become such. So I would say the tech companies are in the lead there. Okay. So um, the next person asked, I'm interested in the perception that Google and Apple are diverse and inclusive companies, even though the challenges are represented in their metrics and in the news. Did your conversations with students on these companies shed any further light on this? Yes. So a couple of the people we talked to did mention these companies as um, being perceived as diverse. And what I learned from my conversation with them is even though they realized that their numbers aren't great, their diversity numbers aren't very good, that they're making an effort. So um, I think that the, the people who responded to the survey, and I would extrapolate this to this whole um, cohort, is that they are tolerant of companies who have bad numbers as long as those companies are making an effort, A for effort. So I hope that answers your question there. Um, you know, the next person's question, I'm not sure I understand. It says, do you have any links to the social work or psychology student groups? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we do. Actually, we have um, we have relationships with faculty in all disciplines, including social work and psychology. So if you want to send me a follow up email, I can tell you how we can help you reach those students if you're interested. Um, the next question is, was there a specific region of the country that responded more in the survey? You know, I, that's a good question. I, I don't know that off the top of my head, but if you want to, I can go back and, and look that up. But we did, it, for us, it was, you know, we sort of invited everybody. We didn't, um, we didn't focus intentionally on any region or, or another. I think I'm talking a lot about Google and Apple because at After College, we are based in, in the Bay Area. We're based in San Francisco. So we have, tend to have, um, and we, we do a lot of, um, I'd say the majority of uh, the, our employers are looking for engineering students. So um, we tend to s sort of focus on that more. Um, oh, can you show the quote again about as much as I would love to blaze trails? Yes, I think we're running out of time. So I would love, I'd be happy to share that quote with you. Like I said, this presentation is going to be up on YouTube. 
And so uh, within the next 24 hours, and we will send you a link to it. So um, when you do that, you can get to that point in the presentation. And if you want to email me at info at after college, I'd be happy to email you back the slide that has that quote on it if you're, um, if you're interested. Okay, with that, it's 1030 exactly. Oh, wait, I have one more question. Um, in your research, did you ever ask students about companies targeting students earlier, building relationships longer, and making the investment in candidates? Was there any insight on whether that's effective? Yes. Well, I think that's a general question that goes outside of diversity. I mean, we, in general, um, do research uh, in, uh, in terms of students. And I think you should look at our annual survey because there you can see some uh, insight in terms of when and how um, younger students like freshman, sophomore who haven't even picked a major yet are starting to form their impressions of different industries and different companies and even how that can influence what major they choose and what field they start or what kind of career they're aspiring to. Um, so that's another um, big question. And I can share other research with you that might help you answer that. So, um, Christine, if you want to send me an email, I'd be happy to talk to you more about that. Okay. Thank you so much for attending today. Um, I hope you found this useful. I, I think it's fascinating to see what's going on. And, and it's I think it's great, uh, great news that uh, we're all focused on diversity as employers and that students are focused on it and that Generation Z is going to come up and kind of be the tipping point. So with that, I'll say goodbye and thank you. And again, please feel free to reach out to me at info at aftercollege.com. You can go to our website, which is aftercollege.com, if you want to learn more about what we do or if you have any questions about that. And I wish you all, you know, um, the best of success in your diversity recruiting efforts. And um, I hope you have a great new year. Thanks so much for attending and um, hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>